you. What are you expecting on the market today? Fairly lacklustre leads nonetheless. Moreover, that late fall on Wall Street is going to sh probably sh see some weakness in the Australian session. We did see BHP shares falling in both London as well as in the US, with BHP down 0.1% in London, but down by half a percent in the US. So it does look like the miners will be coming under pressure. Of course, for the ASX 200, that 4,300 point mark has been a key psychological level, especially over the last 30 days. And if I bring up the 30-day chart of the Australian market, this is what it looks like. I've just drawn a line at that. That 4,300 point mark and you can see that in the last 30 days we've been through it and then back down again uh, five times during the last 30 days so once again it does look like that 4,300 point level is going to be quite elusive for the Australian share market of course the other thing the Australian market is keeping one eye on is China yesterday in China we saw industrial profits come in and for the first two months of the year we actually saw a fall of 5.2 percent. This is the first stretch that we've seen in terms of a fall in industrial profits since January to the August period in 2009. So China having a big impact, especially in terms of our material space. We'll be closely watched today and Bank of Queensland trades X entitlement. So we'll be watching that stock coming back online. But altogether, it does look like we're going to be back down through that 4,300 point mark for the sixth time in the last 30 days. Month, which of course is uh, the end of the quarter as well. How is this likely to influence trade today? and for the rest of the week up until Friday. We are close to the end of the quarter and usually the end of the quarter see some window dressing by portfolio managers and this is where portfolio managers buy as some of the best performing stocks on the market while dumping the worst performing because a lot of the holdings do go public uh, with the quarterly reports. So we have a look at the Australian market and where the winners and losers have been in the year to date so far or the quarter to date so far. We've actually seen the Australian market up by 6%. All sectors have been trading higher uh, so gains across the board with the one exception of telecom <laughs> which has been down by 2.1%, which isn't surprising given that Telstra has paid out a dividend in the period. But the best performing sector has been the industrial sector, which has been up by 13%. Of course, that may be dependent on Leighton, and we may see that sector bumped as the winner of this quarter if we do see that profit downgrade coming through from Leighton's, as expected by the market now. But the energy sector also doing well up by 12%, and information technology, where computer share is the largest uh, stock in that particular sector, up by 10%. In terms of individual stocks, 2012 so far has really been a year for the uh, uh, full turnaround stories. We've seen one still up by a massive 75% in the quarter so far, and Goodman Field are gaining 62% in the quarter so far. So those two stocks have seen some strong buying, especially yesterday where we saw one still up by 2.1%, and Goodman Field are up by 3.7%. The worst stock in the ASX 200, though, has been Mirabella Nickel. That stock down 34% in the the last quarter and we did see that stock coming under pressure yesterday down by seven and a half percent so the last three days of trading for the quarter could see some window dressing and we could see some support for the winners and of course some weakness in those losers yesterday tomorrow what are you watching for anything in particular you think investors will be waiting to hear if we have a look at Transurban, it operates seven toll roads and it has 100% in CityLink as well as 100% in M2. It's one of the few uh, global stocks in the world that is an intra-city toll road operator. And in the past, we have seen uh, Transurban gain a lot of favour with some of those superannuation funds across the world. If we have a look at the share register now, though, it's looking quite open. Previously in the past, we had three shareholders controlling as much as 40% of the stock, but now uh, f the future fund is the largest shareholder with a 6.78 percent stake so with an open share register it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be trying to increase their stakes in this type of environment and in terms of the underlying business this is quite an attractive free cash flow story as well as the yield and a growth play as well we have a look at free cash flow to interest this has increased from about two times to 2.7 times and we've seen expenses and costs falling for this company as well a strong yield we're seeing the m2 expansion as well so i think investors will be be, uh, looking for a little bit more clarity in terms of uh, expansion plans for this company and also the share register seeing that future fund pop up on uh, the the major shareholder list with a 6.8 percent stake and the changes that we've seen for Transurban over the past couple of years I guess it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens over the next 24 months